What's up guys, it's Kevin here again, and woohoo! Alright, so we're going to be doing two videos today. I know I already posted a video of uh, talking about how this is going to be a scripting channel, um, and this is going to be the first tutorial, because I just recently ran into this problem, and I wanted to share with you guys. So, the question is, how do I block people who fly hack? Now, um, if you haven't seen this before, uh, people like players uh, here well they, they'll just you know turn on their fly hacks or whatnot and they'll just fly across the uh, you know games and stuff and it's really annoying especially if your game requires you to run around um, and today I'll be showing you guys how to disable that so if you guys don't know how it works I will do a brief demonstration so we're just gonna click play here um, and so as you can see I have my you know my avatar uh, you know gotten it got that good good shirt on you know for for only a uh, hundred robux uh, I'm just kidding all right I'll stop advertising so we're gonna go over here uh, go into the workspace check out your own player so that's this dude um, and then we're going to click on the humanoid and this is where we can toggle on and off whether uh, we're sitting or not so right here you can see it says sit and so boom we're sitting down so we're just gonna jump uh, hold on one second alright so I'm just gonna jump and then spam sit while I'm doing that so as you can see when I toggle on and off and jump I'm basically flying woohoo alright so this is what uh, these hacking programs will use they'll just have the uh, person jump and uh, sit simultaneously so now that we know how um, this problem is caused or how this hack works we gotta figure out how do we defend it so um, if you're a game developer and stuff you know uh, you'll find certain things that will exploit your game and now we gotta find certain things that will patch it um, and so what we're gonna do is we're going to add a uh, local script into the starter player scripts and it will be um, oh wait one second all right, one second. Sorry, this is just. All right, I gotta order some pizza real quick. Okay, okay. okay, so back to uh, scripting. So we need to figure out how do I make sure that nobody is using flying hacks. Okay, now um, one approach would be, well, let's just check if the player is, um, you know, sitting down and everything. Uh, we should. We we're obviously going to need to include, um, you know, uh, events. Uh, now, a big thing about this is I'm just going to create a script that um, is going to be placed in client side. Now, uh, there is some downsides to that, but it's the most efficient way is to just have the client check itself if it's uh, flying or not. Now, you can do this from the server and everything, but uh, sadly, it's going to, you know, obviously slow down your server, maybe make it a bit more laggy or uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, I recommend doing this through the client. So uh, we're going to start off defining our variables. So let's do local player uh, is equal to game dot players uh, dot local player. And so what this is going to do is it's going to grab the current player. So the player that has this uh, script inside its um, player script. So uh, again, if you're wondering what starter player means over here, it's just basically when you start it. So let's click play. Um, the script will show up inside the player scripts of uh, of you know your character or, or humanoid or whatever. Um, and so, uh, which is really good because that means that the client itself is running the script and not the server. Um, and not only that, what we're going to want to do is we're going to make sure that our filtering is enabled. Okay, uh, it's really important for a secure game to have filtering enabled, and um, we'll we'll talk about that in another video. Uh, how to how to handle filtering enabled, how to make your game most efficient. So we're going to continue on defining our variables. We'll have a local sit count is equal to zero. Okay, this is going to count how many times a person is um, toggling on and on uh, the sit state um, for their character. Uh, this is important because 
uh, it, we don't want them to be able to sit down more than, let's say, three times or, or two times in a second. So local max sit will set equal to two. Okay, so uh, this is the amount of times a person can sit within one second. So now we're going to define, we're going to spawn a function. Okay, uh, and spawning a function means that it just spawns uh, something, but it doesn't. So like, for example, if I did spawn function, wait five, okay, and then uh, print test. Um, it would print test immediately. It wouldn't wait five seconds. And the reason why is uh, there's something called threading. So it'll spawn this function to run in the background or concurrently with everything that you write here. Okay, so like if I spawn function wait five seconds, like I said, it'll wait five seconds while it's printing test. Okay, so, um, so when we do spawn function, we're going to also create a a loop so we're gonna do while wait one do okay this means that um, so when this local script is run it's going to run this loop forever uh, so it's gonna wait one second and then run it again wait one second run it again and so on and so forth so um, this is going to act as our way of checking if the person is sitting for more than we want to so we're obviously going to we're obviously going to have an if statement. So if sit count is greater than max sit, then player kick, you know, and then you can add your kick message, you know, uh, kicked for fly hacks. Okay. So that's some basic stuff. And then um, now what's important is if it passes this test. Okay. So if the player um, sit count is less than uh, is less than or equal to the max sit amount then we want to reset the sit count so we want to reset it equal to zero again the reason why we want to do that is so that um, if the player uh, so that it it obviously uh, will reset every one second okay we want to find out if this dude is sitting too much within one second all right so then after that what we're going to do is we're going to have a um a event obviously so when the character is added we want to connect it with another function so we'll add that um and i'll explain this in just a second so what this says right here is that the player that we defined up here at the top okay when his character is added we connect it with another function okay um and function will take a variable character so uh, the character that is added will be passed to this function. All right, so if I go, hey, uh, print, you know, character dot parent, okay, that will print out the player because the character is a child of the player. All right, um, now I know that might be confusing, but if you just, you know, play around with this, I recommend playing around with this and figuring out like what is in relation uh, with what else, you know. So an uh, important thing about coding is obviously experimenting yourself. So after we do that, then we want to add another event. So character dot humanoid dot uh, state changed connect um, function old state comma new state and then enter so what this says is that we take our character that was just added and we create another event okay so when the character dot humanoid uh, dot state change now this might be confusing you're probably like dude kevin how the heck are you finding all this you know random crap well that's a good question so if you go into your view object browser you can actually view every single uh object um so like for example if we look for character uh let's see here character character where are you buddy okay they, they don't have they don't seem to have a character all right so that sucks but we can we can look it up online but we're not going to do that just for time's sake we'll look up humanoid though so we know that humanoid is a um child of character uh where are you okay right here so 
humanoid, as you can see, is an instance. Okay, it's basically, uh, or not an instance, it's a class. Okay, and so each class can have their methods or you know variables, obviously. So these pink bricks will tell you which uh, which functions you can call using humanoid, and uh, the blue is uh, which variables it holds, and the lightning symbol means which events, and we're looking for events. So as you can see, it says um, event uh, state changed. Okay, now state changed is important. State change is an event that passes on the old state of the humanoid and the new state. Now this is important because we want to count how many times this state changes into a sitting position. Okay, um, and so we're just going to use this. Now there's a lot of other things that you can use, uh, like you can force a character to sit, you can force a character to even jump right here. But um, we're not going to do that uh, for this tutorial, we'll talk about that later. So right here, um, we're going to say if new state is equal to uh, enum dot humanoid uh, humanoid state type there we go dot seated uh, then sit count Jesus I cannot type okay sit count uh, plus one okay so this right here is important because it's saying if the new state is seated now this might look like really long and confusing, but um, this is an enumeration. And now enumeration, uh, basically what it does is it'll substitute um, this thing for a number. So you can actually look up the enumerations for the humanoid state type. So uh, we want seated, which is 13. Okay, so we'll just use this to make it more readable and easier to understand. So if the new state is equal equal to the enumeration of humanoid state type um, seated, then we want to add one to the sit count. Now this is important because if they're spamming seated over and over again, like the uh, hacking tools that they'll use, then the sit count will become greater than the max sit. So uh, that's very important because it'll kick the player. So we can actually try it right now. So let's just, you know, just, you know, screw around. We'll add like, yeah, one of these things. Uh, I don't know, you know, free models, woohoo. Okay, so let's try it out, okay? So before I showed you guys that I could, you know, jump and sit uh, over and over again. So we'll go into players, we'll go into, or I mean not players, workspace. We'll go into your name right here, okay? And then we'll open up the uh, humanoid. Okay, go to properties and so humanoid you can sit right so how about let's try and fly again all right so as you can see when you spam it like that what happens is you're kicked all right now um, uh, yeah so there you go there you guys have it that's the basic tutorial on how to stop people from fly hacking now I'm going to publish this uh, script as a free model on Roblox. You guys can download it. The link should be in the description. Uh, but other than that, um, you know, have a nice day, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and there's going to be a lot of good stuff to come uh, for all you game developers.